so while my uh, main podcast is probate weekly, I also uh, could retitle it how to avoid probate weekly. And one of the ways to do that is not just with an estate plan, but with a great estate planning attorney to help you put the right plan together for you. On the internet, I had a chance to come across Jennifer McNeil Sano, uh, who is a estate planner here in Southern California. It really focuses on working with the entrepreneurs and entertainers. And so I want to get a chance to go a little deeper on that. Jeffrey, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Bill. So first off, how did you end up in estate planning as an attorney? Like what was the path to go into law? And then what was your path to get into estate planning in particular? Um, prior to starting my own practice, I worked in the entertainment in industry. I worked in Sony Music and 20th Century Fox. And while working at 20th Century Fox in the legal side of the film, um, division. I went to law school in the evenings, went to Loyola, and upon graduating, always thought I would stay in-house. But with the birth of my first child, it pretty much changed that trajectory. And once he was in, you know, surrounded by a lot of young families who were needing to put their estate plans together, it pretty much blossomed from there. You know, I think that's one of the pieces of the puzzle. I know I'm in real estate, and so I always say when you buy a house, that should trigger you, you know, in California, if you own a property, you should have an estate plan in place for sure. And short of that, if you haven't yet bought a house, but you have kids, yes. I think it's important. So let's talk about that part first. Why is it important? Why is that a trigger when somebody has children? Why is it so important to have an estate plan? Because if, God forbid, something should happen to you, you need to be able to have a plan in place that not only says who's going to be stepping into your shoes to represent you and to manage your affairs, but who's going to be your guardian. Right. for your children, as well as not and when we talk about guardian, there's the guardian of the person who's going to be taking care of your child on an everyday daily basis. Mm -hmm. There's also a guardian of the estate because a minor can't inherit any assets. And so then you'd have to petition the court for a guardian of the estate. And it's not always the guardian of the person. And um, and then at the point that they become the age of majority, they'd receive that outright distribution. And not every time do you want an 18 year old to inherit a big lump sum of money. So when you actually create a trust in your trust, you're able to pretty much structure that distribution and whether it's going to be held in trust to be protected against creditors or ex potential ex spouses down the road or, you know, different ages or stages in their life that you feel like they could have a withdrawal. But you're also appointing someone who's going to be that trustee that they'll have the discretion to support them through like, you know, purchasing their first house or education, you know, going to college and that sort of thing. So I tell people there's good news and bad news if you live in California. The good news is if you don't have an estate plan to protect your children in the guardianship, the state of California has one for you. That's the bad the news is yeah. the bad news is it looks like the DMV is just not as customer service oriented as the DMV for the care of your children and their education and so on. So talk about what are some of the pain points you avoid by having that plan done ahead of time rather than letting the state of California probate code run that, that decision process for you? You mean even going through probate court? No, what what would what are you avoiding by uh, not going through a probate court? What's the advantage to the family? Meaning how, you're gonna have a plan one with the other, either it's gonna be a lot of attorney's fees and probate court, a lot of drama, a lot of pain, a lot of suffering yeah. versus having a plan, how does, what does a plan look like as opposed to going through probate court for guardianship? Um, well, a plan, everything's private, first of all. So the whole administration is within whomever, your, your trusted people, whether it's your family or your best friend, they're the ones that are administering that and it's a complete private affair. Anything that goes to the probate court ends up being public record. So you potentially have predators that are, you know, searching the searching records and then contacting you on, you know, unsolicited contacts. Um, and the time, the time and the expense, as you're saying, is, uh, is a significant consideration, especially here in California. I mean, you know, opening up a probate just alone with no contest roughly is about 18 months. And that that's in a, in a good, <laughs> a good family situation. And, um, yeah, I think it really it's the time, the money, and the and the uh, the publicity that you'd receive. You know, I I run the statistics on probate cases in LA County. I can't speak to all of Southern California, but LA County specifically, the average hearing date uh, for the final distribution is two years from the final date on average. Some are twenty, as you know, twenty years. Some are ten years. Some are five years. Some are a year or less occasionally, but. 
very rarely, uh, that, and that's not probate. Now we're talking about guardianship, a little different. Let's let's switch switch up a little bit to to uh, estate planning uh, for you know for people for their own estates for their benefit, uh, entrepreneurs and entertainers and such. Why would a, a business person? What are some of the unique reasons why a business person should do estate planning versus just a, a, a you know a, a standard salary person with a couple of properties? What are the some unique unique issues that you plan for for somebody who owns a business? Well, a lot of people don't realize, but you know your your business you can't um, you can't put a beneficiary designation on a business bank account, for example, and you need to assign that interest to something you assign that to your trust so it's oftentimes even if people don't have a you know a real property interest or children if they have a business if they have multiple businesses or if they also have um you know a potential judgment coming down the path you're going to want to establish a trust so that you can assign that interest to the trust to avoid a potential ancillary probate Right. And ancillary probate meaning something on the side because sometimes people say, oh, well, I have my beneficiary. I've designated my beneficiaries. I don't need that. Well, you can't do that when it, when it comes to a, a business. So involved in a large estate with a businessman who didn't talk to you where he um, had a business in the past. It was like a $40 million, ass, uh, $40 million estate, about $20 million worth wow. of property and an ongoing business concern. And with uh, emergency ex partes and such, we finally got uh, authority after three or four months. Uh, and then the banks all have their own procedures. And it's been about four or five months of really difficulty just to be able to write a check or deposit a check. If a estate plans up ahead of time, what does that, what does that handoff period look like? Um, it's well, that, that really depends when you're talking about the, the size of that business. Um, you know, there, there might be other partners and whether there's a business succession plan, because when we talk about an estate plan, that's a foundation, but you also have to have, you know, some sort of business succession plan, whether it's baked into the estate plan, oftentimes it's a side, um, it's a, it's another planning strategy, especially for something of such high value. So those are the kind of things you'd sit down and say, let's talk this through. And I think what happened in this case was he actually met with an attorney and they just never finished the job, right? And so yeah. an estate plan with notes and drafts and information is interesting, but doesn't have the, the force of law. So I, I know that there's the legal side of your business, and then I'm sure there also is the kind of the soft social skills of getting people to follow through on something that isn't comfortable or doesn't have a short-term payoff. What can you do or what do you do to help encourage customers to finish the process they begin on so that you haven't just spent the time preparing the plan, but you actually have it implemented and and uh, and you know uh, funded and all the others all the other procedures are in place? Well, I try to do it in like bits and pieces that's going to be easily digestible to clients because oftentimes, you know, if there's too much all at the same time, just as you said, it's something that people always feel like they can get to or it's at the bottom right. of their list and they don't get to. So if you kind of, right. You know, I gather a little bit of information, then we can have a meeting, talk about a little bit more. There's often questions and people don't even realize that they have questions until we start talking about it. And then, you know, and they feel comfortable to start asking them because I don't want anyone to ever feel like it's a stupid question, especially when it comes to your plan. You have to understand it. You have to understand how to do business on behalf of your trust, for example. Um, so I just kind of keep the, the communication going, gathering some information, having a meeting, gathering a little bit more information, sending some summaries summarizing what we've already discussed to ensure that once once we move forward with the drafting that that's actually going to be exactly as they wished it to be designed now i know your office is in west la or brentwood area typically do you meet clients they can typically come to your office what's the process look like from introduction through completion of the process physically well, it definitely depends on the client and now i think especially since COVID, people have gotten really comfortable with zoom so I try to do as, mu as much, you know, efficient in all of our days at, on Zoom as possible. But we definitely have two in-person meetings, and that would be at the signing, um, as well as I do a binder delivery meeting to kind of go through and make sure that everything's funded. And just to be clear about what that means, when we talk about funding a trust, it's not only that's not only retitling certain assets into the name of your trust, but also reviewing certain assets that maybe you wouldn't retitle and you need to update those designated beneficiaries so that the design of that trust is actually going to work as intended because your trust is ultimately instructions for the assets that's actually funded into them. 
Because the real estate agent, this is the area that we most commonly get involved with, is the customer who spent the money and met with the attorney and started the plan process, but then to the word you're using legally is a fund the plan. As a realtor, that means we didn't de change the deed or you know quit claim the deed from Bob and Mary into the Bob and Mary trust or whatever was appropriate, and then record the deed. And so yeah. as a realtor, I've been involved in the we didn't even do the deed to the deeds prepared, but never signed to the signed deed, but it wasn't recorded uh, through the recorded deed. And I think as realtors, we have the opportunity to work if we refer a customer to follow through as well to make sure the deed doesn't get recorded. Because at the end of the day, you know, an incomplete uh, plan may or may not be of value. It, it, it could be of some value, it could be of zero value. Um, but it definitely is where we as realtors, I think, need to offer the opportunity to help. And if we can, be part of the solution rather than just pick up the pieces when it's not done properly. So towards that, do you, do you get, are real estate agents a source of referrals to you regularly? And if so, um, how are, what are best practices? How can a real estate agent, obviously referring your business is a piece, but how also can they be a benefit to you and your business? Yeah, oftentimes I'll get a call like, you know, you have a potential client that comes to you and then they realize that it's still there was a trust administration that was never done and it's still in the decedent's name so then i would have to come in and you know deal with the administration of the decedents mm -hmm. whether it's um the parents of the potential client and going through um the steps or if as you said it was never actually funded but maybe reviewing that trust uh, they'll reach out to me i'll review the trust and there there's significant intent and there's actually a petition that you can file here in california that's i mean in la county is pretty successful it's called the hegstead petition and if you show enough intent you can get it ordered that it is a trust asset and then you can move forward so i try to you know initiate whatever i can do on my end to push along that sale timely it is interesting. When I talk to attorneys in other states, they can't believe we have a Hegstead petition. Here, it's almost like a, oh, actually, it's a Hegstead petition, like it's an automatic, you know, thing. And in other states, they're what? You can't do that. Yeah. But no, it's a whole regular business. Well, look, Jeff, I appreciate your time, and I know that you have an awful lot to offer. Uh, and okay. I've enjoyed uh, seeing you in the past, talking to you in the past, as well as today. Uh, I know on your website, and I'll put the link there, McNeil. Uh, LuzanoLaw.com. There's a contact button that has both a, a form and a phone number. Should people feel comfortable they have questions regarding estate plans to give you a call to set an appointment or how does that work? Yeah, feel free and someone from my office will get back to you and I'm happy to set up a 15 minute consult and, and see how I can help. Fantastic. Well, I appreciate your time today. Thank you so much. Nikki. we'll put the contact info in the description. Look forward to talking to you soon. Thanks, Bill.